This is Dr. Mimi Lam, and I'm a renal physician at Metro Health. I'll be helping to answer the question, how do diuretics affect potassium balance? They do this primarily by their action on transport processes in the collecting tubule. Normally, in the collecting tubule, sodium is reabsorbed through epithelial sodium channels, leaving behind negative charges in the lumen and setting up an electrical gradient for the passive secretion of cations such as potassium and hydrogen ion. When a diuretic is used, it impairs the reabsorption of sodium and water proximal to the collecting tubule, usually in the loop of Henle or the distal convoluted tubule. This results in increased delivery of sodium and water to collecting tubule sites. The sodium is then available to be reabsorbed through the epithelial sodium channels and to begin the process that results in potassium secretion into the lumen. The increased amount of water that is delivered results in dilution of solute in the collecting tubule. This helps to keep the concentration of potassium low in the lumen and facilitates the secretion of potassium down its electrical and concentration gradient. In addition, Diuretics often induce at least a transient degree of intravascular volume depletion. This activates the renin-angiotensin system and results in secretion of aldosterone. Aldosterone has several effects. It increases the activity of epithelial sodium channels, increases the number of potassium channels that allow secretion into the lumen, and increases the activity of basolateral sodium-potassium ATPase which puts potassium inside the cells, making it available for secretion into the lumen. The net result of these processes is an increase in renal potassium secretion and excretion, often associated with a decrease in serum potassium level. And this is why our patients who take diuretics often need potassium supplementation with foods or potassium tablets.